Hello, welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, hi, hello, my name is Carrie. If you've been here before, welcome back. Today's video, we are going to be talking about how to reduce waste in the kitchen. This is something I've wanted to talk about for a while now, and I'm just happy that I'm sitting here having this conversation with you guys. I am not making this video because I think I am the poster child of zero waste or living sustainably, but I am a person who has evolved over time and who is now passionate about about learning new ways to protect our planet as much as we can, to reduce my carbon footprint, to reuse and recycle and compost and reduce waste as much as I possibly can. I personally was not raised in a household that composted or that even took recycling that seriously. Reducing waste wasn't really on my radar when I was growing up, but I was taught to appreciate nature and from a young age, I felt a deep connection to the planet that we live on. And I think that that's something that as human beings we all share and that's something that we all have in common and that is that we love our planet because without earth we would not be here. The reason why I wanted to make this video is because I want taking care of our planet and reducing waste and taking little steps in the right direction to feel more accessible and more reachable to achieve because I think that it can feel like such a daunting task and I understand that feeling so well. I am not perfect in any way, shape or form. I have plastic in my kitchen right now, but there are steps that we can take today that we can implement into our daily lives that will get us on the right track in the right direction to help take care of our planet the best way that we can. Before we get into the video though, please take a moment to make sure that you are subscribed to my channel and that you have notifications turned on. Subscribing to my channel will allow me to show up in your subscription box so that you can see whenever I post a new video with notifications. That's that bell button right next to the subscribe button. You can turn notifications on so that you are alerted anytime I post a new video so that you never miss one from me. I'm focusing on the kitchen for this video because the kitchen is the heart of the home. I feel like everything starts in the kitchen. I also think that focusing on one area of your house, like your kitchen, instead of trying to change your entire lifestyle at one time is really beneficial in making it feel like it's possible and that it's achievable. I've broken this video down into seven different tips. And since I mentioned food scraps a moment ago, I want to start off with mentioning composting. A lot of you who follow me on Instagram and even here on YouTube have asked me about composting because you've seen my compost bin in the kitchen and you've seen our compost in the backyard. And I've mentioned how we used compost soil in our vegetable garden, which can be really beneficial to your vegetable garden, by the way. So if you are somebody who grows veggies, it will be very useful for you. Composting is a process that reduces or prevents the release of methane during organic matter breakdown. So methane is 26 times more potent than carbon dioxide as a greenhouse gas and is a significant contributor to global greenhouse gas emissions. According to a report I found online from the EPA, about 34% of people are composting in their homes, which was actually more than I thought it was going to be. Being somebody who grew up in a household that didn't compost, I was actually surprised by that. I did think it was less than that, but 34% is still much less than half. And if we all started to compost, we could make some really big changes to our environment. Because we are a household that is constantly cooking with fresh veggies, I couldn't imagine doing it any other way. Composting makes so much sense for us and it also is much more convenient than you could imagine. Having a compost bin right next to me on the kitchen counter that I can just grab my scraps and throw it right in the bin to take it back into the backyard later on is such a seamless process for us. So I'm gonna have my fiance Alex explain to you guys exactly how we do it here in our house. What's up everybody, I'm Alex and welcome to the backyard where the vibes are always good and the vegetables are great. We are gonna talk a little bit about composting. Super simple to do at your house and has a lot of great benefits both for your garden and for the earth. Uh, so essentially, what you're gonna need is a compost bin first and foremost, and you wanna keep it in an area that is shaded. We got ours at Home Depot, by the way. I will try to find the link for it and put it in the description box. So what's great about the compost is 
You can use kitchen scraps. You can also use green waste from your yard, like grass clippings and uh, you know vegetable matter, as well as the uh, little bits of vegetables that you don't use in the kitchen. And essentially, you just want to keep it pretty balanced. You need to have about half green and half brown. The brown matter, like um, cardboard or papers or you know other trimmings uh, that are brown add carbon and the green trimmings add nitrogen so both of those are really good for your soil the third magic ingredient is water so essentially we have here uh, some grass clippings from our backyard uh, we have some vegetables that you know we used when we're juicing or whatever and uh, we also have some cardboard this that I just threw in there. Those are some trimmings off of a tomato plant. You can't add vegetables that have like a fungus on them or leaves that are, you know, uh, discolored or maybe they look sickly. Don't put those in your compost because you have the risk of like essentially allowing the fungus into your compost and it will, it will pollute it. So what you wanna do is uh, you throw that stuff in there. You're gonna grab a shovel and you just kind of want to dig down to where it's brown, like where the uh, the soil has already started to convert from the fresh matter into what's called hummus. Not the type that you dip, but um, this nice kind of rich dark soil down here you can see like this stuff it's pretty much it you mix it around and you How water often it do you mix it up uh like i i mix it like two to three times a week and i add water about the same two to three times a week and we add to our compost bin pretty much daily every day every because day we're cooking 100%. every day and if you're adding paper or cardboard you want to make sure that that gets shredded and um is wet because the water helps the uh, the whole thing kind of break down and it gives life for the bacteria, the good bacteria that's in there that's converting this matter into soil. Then after you add it, you kind of have to wait a couple of months and at the bottom it turns into like nice nutrient rich, uh, essentially a, a natural fertilizer. Right now this is pretty watery because I just finished watering it. And you wanna make sure that you just kinda of like put that back in there. Don't let this puddle sit because you'll get like flies and stuff breeding in there and you don't want that. Just saw recently an interesting statistic that said that Americans on average throw away 28% of their waste is actually stuff that could be composted and instead it's going to landfills and that's creating more greenhouse gases. So this is just a really eco-friendly way to take care of your kitchen waste and your garden clippings and use it beneficially to help your garden grow. It acts as a natural fertilizer and it helps keep out you know, pests and funguses and stuff. And one other thing to know, you don't necessarily have to have a huge compost pile like this. There are a lot of different options and much more smaller compact ones for those of you who don't have as much space. So don't be put off, make sure you compost. Since we just talked about how your compost soil can be beneficial to your vegetable garden, let's talk about how your vegetable garden can help you reduce waste in the kitchen. Growing your own food is a great way to help you easily and just in such a beautifully harmonious way, reduce waste in your life. Obviously, if you are growing your own veggies in your home, you don't have to go out to the market as often to purchase produce, which helps reduce waste in plastic packaging, in plastic bags. It also saves on fossil fuel to help transport that produce from one place to another. So there are a long list of benefits to growing your own food, not only in reducing waste, but also just for your mind, body, and soul. Growing your own food is such a beautiful, harmonious experience in your life, and adding that process to your lifestyle has a plethora of benefits, and you can watch 
any of my other content to get more information on growing your own veggies. I have a video about how to start your own vegetable garden and many videos that have come after that video regarding my vegetable garden. So definitely check that out for more information on that. My next tip on how to reduce waste in the kitchen is to reuse. And this is something that I have been paying so much attention to recently and it has made a big change and it actually is much easier than you could ever imagine. Here are some examples of how you can reuse a product in your house that are super simple. For example, paper towels. This is something that we actually just implemented into our life recently due to this global pandemic because people went out and purchased all the paper towels around us and we couldn't get access to them because people were bulk buying paper towels because they were afraid that they weren't going to have them available to them. So we have a ton of reusable cloth napkins and towels in our home. So we just started using those and we realized really quickly that we don't need to use paper towels in our life. We can use napkins to dry our hands, to clean our hands when we're eating. We use reusable cloths to clean our home as well. We just throw them in the washer, then take them out of the dryer and they're ready to go again. So I think what's really important is to recognize just how simple that little switch is, but how important paper towels are to a household for so many people. They couldn't even imagine living their daily life without paper towels. And I completely understand that because if you would have told me that two years ago, I probably would have thought, I don't really know if I wanna live without paper towels, but now we do it so simply and so easily in our household. Another example is reusing glass jars. When your food comes to you like pasta sauce or whatever it might be in a glass jar, you can reuse that for so many different things. We use it for just our everyday drinks. We have a lot of glass jars just up in our glassware cabinet because we love using it for water. I love using them for my matcha lattes. I love the lip and the size of a glass jar. They're so beautiful and so convenient. You can use them for propagating your plants, for pickling your vegetables from your vegetable garden and the list goes on what you can use them for. Also a very simple example, and a lot of people have changed to this, which is awesome, reusable totes and reusable produce bags. So you can grab your tote on your way out to the grocery store and use that. And you can also use a produce bag so that you don't have to use the plastic bags that they have there at the grocery store. When we take a moment in our daily life and think about, hmm, how can I reuse this item that I just received instead of throwing this into the trash can? It really truly does change our perspective and it makes it so much easier to make steps in the right direction. My next tip is recycling, a super simple one that a lot of people do do in their household, but there are a good chunk of people who aren't recycling. And I think that with this one, it can be just simple things like making sure you do completely clean out your glass jar before throwing it into the recycling bin and also cleaning out your tin cans completely. If you do decide to put those to the waste bin, just making sure that they're completely clean so that when they go into landfills, they can be separated and taken care of as recycle. There are probably some of you out there who put everything into one trash can because one, you don't like the look of two different trash cans or you don't wanna spend the money that it costs for one of those trash cans that has the divider in the middle. It's crazy how expensive trash cans can be. But I have a huge tip for you guys. We have been using a weaved basket that looks gorgeous in our home as our recycling bin, and I just love it. It makes the process so much easier. Because yeah, you want your house to look good. You don't wanna take up too much space in your kitchen. We have a really large weaved basket that we put right out of the kitchen. We also used a very small one at one point. We were just taking our recycling out more often. But now we use a larger one just so that it's more convenient convenient for us, but it looks like our home decor baskets are really popular in the home decor world. So it just fits right in with the house. So it doubles as decor slash is also helping the environment. My next tip is to make your own. And by this, I mean to literally make your own of whatever it is that you use often in your household. So whether that be bread or your own vegetable stock, whatever that is that you use often, there are a lot of things that you can make at home, which helps us to reduce waste for cartons of vegetable broth and also bags that bread come in in the market. Not only does it help reduce waste, it also helps you save money. And especially right now when most of us, unless we're essential workers, 
are at home more right now than ever before, learning how to do these things are so beneficial, not only to our lifestyle, but also to our like mind, body, and soul. Like I have been able to create bread for the first time in my life and I love bread. I've been buying bread my entire life. Bread is like my favorite thing on the planet and the fact that I know how to make bread now makes me so happy. So just simple things like that for things that we love and use so regularly, it's really great to know how to create it ourselves. Alex recently just made his own dried coconut that he dried in the backyard from the sunshine. And instead of going to the market and buying a bag of it, we just did it ourselves here at home and it was so easy and so delicious. It's just little things like this that if you can find the time to do it yourself, it really makes a big difference. Let me know in the comments below what you guys make at home that you use regularly. Another tip is to buy in bulk where you can. So for instance, I just recently bought in bulk when it came to flour, when it came to yeast and some brown sugar, and then I just take those items and I put them into a glass jar. I recently purchased these beautiful vintage farmhouse glass jars that I got off of Etsy, which was really nice to buy from a small shop. Also really nice to buy containers that are being reused because they're vintage and they're from the 1970s. And honestly, sometimes when you buy these older items, they are just the absolute best quality. They're just better quality than new containers that you can find online today. They've proved their quality because they've lasted for so long. I just went on a tangent about my vintage farmhouse containers. Let's get back to buying in bulk. <laughs> buying in bulk helps us save money and also helps us reduce packaging because instead of buying 10 different packages of one product, you can buy one bigger package, you can take that package and you can reuse it or compost it or recycle it or do whatever you can do with the type of packaging that it comes in. And then you can just grab and refill your container in your kitchen that is more sustainable. Another great thing about it is that you are less likely to run out of this item because you don't have to go run out to the store all the time to get it. You're buying in bulk, which is more money up front, but does save money in the long term and also makes it so you always have some there for you ready to go in storage. Lastly, I wanna talk about preserving your own food. This one gets me really excited because we cannot wait to start pickling this year. We always have a little bit more produce than we can handle as two people. So not only do we give our vegetables to friends and family, but we also like to pickle, which this year I think we're gonna do a lot of. And not only that, for even store-bought things, like when we buy red onions per se, and we know that we can't finish all of them because sometimes this just happens, right? We have an abundant amount of something and we're we realize as we go on, oh my goodness, we might not be able to finish all of this before it goes bad. Instead of waiting for that specific vegetable to go bad, we can preserve it and we can pickle it. And I think learning more about fermenting is really interesting. All you really need is some white distilled vinegar or some apple cider vinegar, and then you can do all different sorts of things. So if you want to take your cucumbers that you have an abundant amount of from the vegetable garden and make pickles, but make them like spicy pickles, you can add some chili pepper. There are just so many different ways that you can preserve your own food. If you guys have any recipes or ideas when it comes to pickling vegetables, please let me know in the comments below because we are excited to do much more of that this year. This one's really great because you're hitting two points in one. You can knock them both out. So you can reuse your glass jars and you can also preserve your food, which is reducing food waste. So it's a win-win. Please let me know in the comments below any tips that you guys have for reducing waste in the kitchen. I am so eager to learn more. I am open ears. This is also a non-judgment zone. So definitely help each other out in the comments below and do not judge yourself or others when it comes to your path of living a sustainable life and on your journey to reducing waste because we all have to start somewhere and I am nowhere near perfect in this and I am definitely still learning. So we are all in this together. Thank you all so much for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please remember to give it a thumbs up and I will see you guys very soon in an all new video.